Hello. Today we're going to look at some of the basic definitions for vector calculus, starting with the definition of a vector. So, firstly we define a coordinate system. We're going to use the Cartesian coordinates here. So if we define the x-axis, y-axis and z-axis as shown, then a vector is defined as a movement from one point to another. Hence it has direction and size. If we now define the unit vectors x-hat, y-hat and z-hat being a movement parallel to their respective axis but with magnitude 1, then we can start to define other vectors. So talking about a general vector here, say r, then we say that r is made up of x, y and z components, where r is x on the x-hat direction, y on the y-hat direction and z in the z-hat direction. Now that we've defined a vector, we're going to start to look at some of the operations we can perform. The first of these being scalar multiplication, say by a constant alpha. If we do this, we find that the x, y and z components are all multiplied by alpha itself. Hence, for alpha equals 1, this is just the same vector r. Or say we multiply by 0 0.5, we see that the vector halves. Or if we times by 1.7, it grows. Moving on from this and returning back to our original axes, we can start to look at operations where multiple vectors are used. Hence, we define the vectors a and b as shown, with the subscript showing which direction the quantity acts in. The first most basic operator being addition. To perform this, we combine the two vectors, which means summing the values in each direction, i.e. we take a plus b will be ax plus bx x hat plus ay by y hat plus az bz z hat. Now moving on to subtraction, say we want to take a minus b, what we do is we just take the minus b vector, where we take the negative of each component, and then we perform the same addition as we did before. In other words, this means a plus minus b. To summarise, for each vectors a and b, we end up with this final expression for addition and subtraction, where the plus and minus is used to show each of the cases. As mentioned earlier, a vector takes a direction and magnitude, so it's quite useful to work out what this magnitude is. This is the length or size of this vector r. So to find this, we first consider the right angle triangle formed by x and y. And using Pythagoras, it's clear to see that the diagonal here will be the square root of x squared plus y squared. Using this result and forming another right angle triangle with the z component, we can see here that the magnitude of r will be the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which leads on to the definition of a unit vector. This is a vector that has a magnitude of 1, hence we just take the vector itself and divide by its magnitude. We denote this unit vector with a little hat, as shown here. We now move on to the slightly more complicated definitions. The first of these being the dot product. So if we define vectors a and b as we did earlier, then the dot product is the sum of their component-wise multiplication, i.e. ax times bx plus ay times by plus az times bz. This also takes a second more useful form, being the magnitude of a times by the magnitude of b, multiplied by cos of the angle between the two vectors. This is useful, as we can understand how the two vectors relate without needing to draw them. For example, if the two vectors are at a right angle as shown here, clearly cos 90 will be 0, and the dot product will end up being 0. Or, if the two vectors are parallel, then we see here that the dot product will just be the sum of the magnitudes, and clearly a vector dot product with itself will just be the magnitude squared. Next, we are going to consider the cross product. This is an operation that returns a vector. So, say we have a cross b here, in the red, this will be 90 degrees, or orthogonal, to a and b. And if you were to take the size or magnitude of a cross b, this is actually the same as the area between a and b, if we create the parallelogram. a cross b takes slightly more abstract form. This actually turns out to be the determinant as shown here, where we have an x column, a y column, and a z column as shown. Like the dot product, this has a slightly easier form, being the magnitude of a multiplied by the magnitude of b, multiplied by the sine of the angle between the two vectors. If the two vectors are parallel, then this forces the sine term to be zero, which is clear to see, as the parallelogram would have zero area anyway. The most simple case being the vector a cross-producted with itself. We now move on to the final definition of this video. So, imagine we add a vector c and form a 3D shape as shown here. Then, say we want to define the volume of this, then this is the dot product between c and a cross b. 
And clearly, as we see here, if we increase the magnitude of b, then everything grows, and obviously the value of the volume will grow. Clearly, we could come to the same conclusion for volume with a dot product of a and b cross c, or the dot product of b and c cross a. So that concludes our basics for vector calculus. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you found it extra helpful, please consider sharing.